After week, I'm Dara Breen. Joining me this week are Nish Kumar, Susie Ruffell and Ed Byrne, Rhys James, Hugh Dennis and Angela Barnes. <laughs> we start with a round called Picture of the Week. I show the panel a topical image and ask them to tell me what's happening. So what's going on here? It's <laughs> <laughs> the reason why wondering why no one else has come dressed as their favourite quality street. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, that is the only full cabinet she stood in front of all week. Yeah. <laughs> it's Theresa May saying, mm. welcome to the annual white people convention. Mm -hmm. First on the agenda, is porridge too spicy? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Are there 13 of them? Is she saying one of you will betray me? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like she's just sort of going like, okay, now I think we'd, uh, we'd like to go around the room and you should all say a little bit about yourself, just your name, where you're from, and what day you're planning on resigning. <laughs> <laughs> Has David Davis just realised his fly is undone? Yeah. <laughs> 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 That's not a bit Looks like my double D's showing. <laughs> She's probably saying, is it, is it just me or is it incredible that I'm still here? <laughs> <laughs> Does any of you know what it is? What she is doing is she is delivering a speech at a summit for the Cabinet at Chequers last Friday. Absolutely right. Thank you very much. You. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is Prime Minister <laughs> Theresa May addressing members of the Cabinet at her official country resident Chequers on Friday. Since the meeting, both David Davis and Boris Johnson have resigned, amongst others, rather than back May's plans for a soft Brexit. At the time of recording, however, and we are watching this, Theresa May is still Prime Minister. So, well done, Theresa May. Uh, so, <laughs> what are you making of all the chaos? Well, it really makes you believe in karma, doesn't it, when England fans trash IKEA and then our cabinet collapses. <laughs> <laughs> The great thing about it is that we're now at the stage we should have been at about 18 months ago. Yes, that is, that's a good thing that's happened. We've actually decided on something. And what was decided on? Did you see... Did the you Brexit's read? so soft, yeah. they're going to have to thumb it in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I believe you're within a community that hasn't had that issue. Uh, uh... <laughs> That, Very little. Yes, it is. It is an, an unbelievably soft Brexit that was done. Even Remainers are going, all yeah, oh, right, come on. Because basically, it seems like all she's done is rename mm. things. Formerly, we were part of a custom union, but now we're part of a union of customs. <laughs> 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 it's just like, you've just, we did the same thing. There might as well be a big sign over the, the, the just the, the Brexit department might just have in Latin the words, let's not and say we did. Uh, just, <laughs> <laughs> just, I mean, and th this is the opening bargaining position. Yeah. This is the bizarre thing about it. Like, I mean, if this is where you're starting yeah. in a negotiation, when, when Britain leaves, you, you're, you, we'll be speaking French. Uh, and... <laughs> Oh, j'aime le Brexit. They're calling it um, Brexit in name only, which they've shortened to Brino, which sounds like Brino. Aquaman's really low budget villain. <laughs> <laughs> or just an Aussie or any Australian man called Brian. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Brian out, oh, yeah. <laughs> You're in the news today, Brian out, on out. <laughs> I do think I do think it's only fair though to just to say, take a second to remember all Boris's achievements as foreign secretary. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> what amazes me is how little work any of them do, because uh, David Davis, between the 1st of January and the 29th of June, he met Michelle Barnier for a total of four hours. Now, between those two dates, there was 4,296 hours. I did the maths, Dara, because I know you love that sort of thing, right? <laughs> and that works out as 0.09% of his time, right? Now, to put that in context, I spent four hours today working that out. And I have yeah. <laughs> as David Davis did in terms of yeah. moving the entire Brexit process forward. <laughs> it's interesting that they both resigned after the summit. I think it's interesting. And some of the papers are saying that's because they were threatened, weren't they? That if they resigned at the summit, they'd have, like, they'd have their ministerial cars would be taken away. Yeah. And they'd be stuck in the countryside. And I just thought, do you know what? I'd love to have seen Boris have to make his way home from Chequers. Cos I've done some walk of shame in my time, but never <laughs> after screwing the entire... <laughs> <laughs> checked Uber and it was like a 1.7 surcharge. <laughs> and they were like, no, nah, I'll just stay in until tomorrow, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it literally said well, you can't use your car and you can get a taxi, but you, the taxi can't come onto the grounds of Chequers. So you have to walk down to the gate, which is a mile, because it's <gasps> a fancy house. Oh, uh, and so you have to walk all the way. And it was I'm that. Sorry, it's a what? That, just do that uh, again. Fancy house. It's a fancy house. <laughs> that's a voice, voice I've just it's adopted a for fancy things. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where it came from, but I'm channeling something. Oh, uh, yeah. may I say, your shoes tonight, uh, uh, your shoes tonight are... Off the front of front of What magical what? man would take a tiny flute? A can make you say, shoe? I shall make you some shoes. <laughs> <laughs> some magical shoes. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, these shoes could walk a mile down a garden path to find a cab. That's, that's a, that makes me a better man to run this country than <laughs> half the cab. <laughs> yeah. the, uh, so what's going to happen now? One of the things that is definitely going to happen uh, over the summer is I'm going to ask you to adopt me so I can get an Irish passport. <laughs> <laughs> But all of this is every white person I know uh, is currently investigating some sort of long-held Irish citizenship or, like, Irish family. And the only people I know that aren't doing that are people of colour. And I would absolutely love it if Brexit results in all the white people leaving and Nigel Farage having to be stuck with me and my entire family. <laughs> <laughs> and now Jeremy Hunt's the Foreign Secretary. Yes. Yeah. Which is great. It's such good news. That means he's going to have to meet Donald Trump. Right, Donald Trump is going to absolutely destroy him. He's going to shake his hand, crush it into a pulp, <laughs> and then Jeremy Hunt's going to have to go to A&E to find there's a 15-hour wait and the doctor fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> there's been so many changes. It just It's going to get to a stage where we're all going to have to do it. It's going to be like jury duty. <laughs> <laughs> just going to ring my mum and be like, all right, mum, what are you up to? And she'll be like, I'm, I'm the Minister of Transport. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the Minister for Immigration, and things are about to get a whole hell of a lot browner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, OK, who were dramatically rescued this week? Oh, yeah, the Thai football team. Yes, they, they were. were. Pulled out of the, uh, the, the network of caves, which is a beautiful thing. With all this crap news, it's a great, really Go uplifting, on. amazing story of, 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 you know, of heroism. Yes. But at the yeah. same time, you've got to feel for the Chilean miners right now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know they're all on the phone and going, have you seen this shit? Yes. <laughs> Let's get ourselves back in the game. We need to plan something big and now. But it's also encouraging for Britain as a whole, because it means that however big a hole you've got yourself into, you can always get yourself out. <laughs> <laughs> if that coach had come out wearing a waistcoat, my head would have fallen off. <laughs> yeah. 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 But... Couldn't let Gareth Southgate have his moment, could he? No, particularly when they eventually came out, like, where he's going, OK, that's great, so, uh, next Saturday? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> training again, lads. Uh, don't, don't, lose, don't lose focus, we're doing very well now. <laughs> the wild boars. Bit of, bit of a brief hiatus in our season. Uh, <laughs> but we've got a big match coming up, uh, so uh, get focused. It was glorious as a thing. Well, yeah, yeah, and it means that they don't need to have a, uh, don't have a floodlit pitch anymore, cos they can all see in the dark. <laughs> Uh, moving on, what problems has the summer heat wave been causing? Put me in a right mood, Dara. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do well in the sun. I, d I burn really easily, right? I have to wear Factor 50 every time I go out. And I was talking to my mum about it, and she said, well, you redheads, you do burn easily, don't you? 
Right, well, may surprise you, ladies and gentlemen, not my natural hair colour. <laughs> no one's natural hair colour, is it? I'm not related to fraggles. It's not. <laughs> You're right, Mum. Yeah, when I got my hair dyed, it was a mistake to get the matching skin graft. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so hot. It's so hot. The other day, I genuinely saw a man fanning himself with his own sandwich in between bites. <laughs> <laughs> I've been walking around in very little lately. And I've heard that. And yeah, not, I, it was very disappointing right. backstage. I've yeah. got <laughs> <laughs> it's air conditioned back there, so it's all right. But at home, I don't think I've sat on my balls this many times <laughs> ever. <laughs> it's a ridiculous number of times. And I, every time it happens, I go, oh, there it is again. <laughs> Wear underpants, Ed. Yeah. It's too hot! <laughs> <laughs> During the like one of the hottest days, he rang me and I went, "What you been up to?" He went, "I've just been for a curry." And I was like, "That is one of the hottest <laughs> days of the year." He went, "Yeah, it was really bad." Halfway through, I had to ask him for some of them cloths to have a wash, and then I carried on. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's not normal behaviour in the heat. Uh, there is an element of whether that's a thing, whether you, eat, you whether you eat spicy food in order to cool yourself down, or that's whether why hot countries have. No, I think why I could be like, but, but or, or is it me. because that's what grows there is our uh, 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 thing. <laughs> wait, wait, whoa, 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 no, but I presume that unless it's magic out of the air, that the spices and powders with which you make curry do at some point grow somewhere. I just wanted to make that clarification. Yeah, didn't why? want you to lose the you, science. No, I, I, didn't, I didn't think that people in India draw pots yeah. of curry down. <laughs> and thank, oh, that's, I'm, doing, I'm doing the bloody dance now, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Give that round. The boys are going to answer you and Now we play a round called Boris Gump. This game <laughs> involves Susie and Reese. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand-up challenge. I launch the wheel of news, and wherever it chooses to stop, one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. OK, here we go. Let's spin the wheel. And the first subject is friends. Susie. Yep. Um... I'm sick of mine. That'll be the first thing. Uh, oh, absolutely sick, and I'll tell you for why. Um, they've all started having babies. Uh, it started with Poppy. Uh, Poppy's my posh friend, you can tell, cos her name's Poppy. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and she rang me a little while ago and she said to me, Suze, I was wondering, do you want to come to Barney's first birthday party? And my first reaction was no. <laughs> no. <laughs> the main reason I didn't want to go to Poppy's uh, kids' party was because of um, Poppy's mum, Camilla. Poshest lady I have ever met. She's one of those people, she's so posh that she doesn't move her face when she talks. You know, one of those, oh, hi, welcome to it's great to see you, how are you doing? Oh my God, you met Hugo, you sent me off to meet Hugo. <laughs> <laughs> what happened there is the weight of our own privilege is literally stopping her from using muscles. <laughs> but she does this very odd thing, whenever she introduces me to people, she moves her face a little bit, and it's because whenever she introduces, she always lets them know I'm gay. But when she does it, she puts on this very weird voice, very strained voice. She basically puts on the voice of a deaf person. <laughs> so she would go, oh, hi, welcome to the party. It's great to see you. How are you doing? Oh, my God, who met Susie? You certainly me asked me Susie. Susie doesn't have a husband, cos she's a deaf <laughs> man. <And> you go... <laughs> that is offensive. That is offensive to both deaf men and to the deaf community. <laughs> <laughs> They won't hear, but speak up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Julia Hall. <laughs> OK, that leaves it with Reese. Let's see what your topic is. Let's spin the wheel. OK, it's technology. Nice and topical. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I borrowed my dad's laptop recently, right? Don't do that, is my advice. <laughs> <laughs> One of the biggest regrets of my life. I needed to use one, mine broke, used his. I don't know why I did this. I clicked history. <laughs> it was empty, and that's worse. Let me tell you, that is worse. <laughs> My own father, private browsing, unbelievable. 
okay? <laughs> Everyone's so paranoid now. Everyone's so scared about being spied on and stuff. Like, there's all these smart TVs, all these articles about how they've got cameras in them. They're filming us just watch TV. I keep telling people that is not national security. That is shit Gogglebox, right? <laughs> Gogglebox, by the way, only good because of the edit, right? It's only good because of the edit. I learned that the hard way because my mum thought it would be fun to do homemade Gogglebox with my dad, right? She thought it would be fun if she put her phone down next to the TV and recorded her and my dad watching an episode of The Crown. But they forgot instantly. So they just made a 55 minute silent movie. <laughs> middle-aged couple who don't like each other anymore. <laughs> it's like a Harold Pinter play. It's bleak as shit. <laughs> to be fair, she speaks twice in the hour. He doesn't speak once. He doesn't even look at her. But she speaks twice, once four minutes in to go, can you turn it up a bit? And once three minutes later to go, Michael, it is still not loud enough. And that is <laughs> That's the whole episode. <laughs> we don't need to worry about them filming us and spying on us. We're giving them the information. Well, it's data, isn't it? We're data. You know, but then we're still humans, that's why we're worried. But we just data, it's all on social media, we're giving it away. Facebook's the one to worry about. I don't even mean Cambridge Analytica, I mean before that. Do you remember a while ago, you'd go on Facebook and there'd be an advert for something you Googled a couple of days earlier, right? And we'd all be terrified, like, what, how do they know? Then we figured out what cookies of the internet are and we chilled out. Now you go on Facebook and there's an advert for something you've thought. You never really expressed <laughs> the interest in. You've not typed anywhere, just been thinking in the back of your mind, and then Facebook pops up to you and says, like, oh, you're looking for some beans? You're like, what the hell, Mark? How'd you know that? <laughs> And I know how. It's because they're listening to us, right? That's my theory. They're recording us. I did an experiment to prove this theory, where for a whole week, every time I was by my laptop, I would open up Facebook and I would say the phrase, Domino's Pizza. For a whole week, ten times a day, every single day, Domino's Pizza. And after a week, I went on Facebook, every single advert was for Imodium. They are listening <laughs> to us. <laughs> Thank you very much, Brendan well both of you. Points go to Susie. Come on back. Our next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question? On the board are six categories. Susie, which category would you like? Uh, I would like politics, please. OK, your category is politics. Mm. The answer is four days. What is the question? Um, how long it takes Nish to get through American customs? <laughs> Don't be angry with me, be angry with them. I'll have you know, I just went to America and it took me... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, how long did it take me to work out my sunbathing next door neighbour was dead? <laughs> <laughs> Is it because he was neither tanning nor burning? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is it how long I laughed when Danny Dyer called David Cameron a twat? <laughs> <laughs> Is it what constitutes overstaying your welcome at a house viewing? <laughs> What was God's estimate for creation? <laughs> <laughs> is it, uh, how long after a funeral is it considered okay to send a dick pic to the widow? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Provided it's classy. Classy, okay. <laughs> and you put your yeah, garland, little, little garland 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 around. Around. Yeah, they can give you this difficult time. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe this is the second time I'm having to say this to you in the single episode that we're recording, <laughs> but for the love of God, put some fucking underpants <laughs> on. Is it how long did I spend getting my shit together before I realised that's just an expression? <laughs> <laughs> is it how long, when he's watching his prey, how long can Michael Gove stay motionless for? <laughs> When I'm eating a magnum and some of it falls on the pavement, how long is the grieving process? <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know what the actual answer is? Is it how long does he spend in the tomb in Jesus of Nazareth, the director's cut? <laughs> <laughs> is it how long do I pretend to be browsing the chemist when I know all I'm buying is anus cream? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs is it how long it felt to watch that stupid Churchill movie? Oh, my God, I didn't realise oh Gary Alban's entire family was in. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it, it was it's terrible. A, a I don't know how bad I am what? that I just thought, oh, that dog made a film. <laughs> 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 oh, my God, it was so good. It's all part of film. Should we evacuate Dunkirk? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Uh, do you know what the actual answer is? Is it the amount of time Donald Trump is in the UK for his visit? Absolutely. Thank you very much, Dish. Oh. Yeah. Oh. 
Yes, the question I was in was, for how long will US President Donald Trump be visiting the UK? Oh, this is the news that Trump arrived in the country today for his four-day working visit, uh, which will include meetings with Prime Minister Theresa May and the Queen. We say that now, having recorded a couple of days ago, it'll be whatever Prime Minister is currently Prime Minister. <laughs> Minister by Thursday is Boris Johnson, no, and he has to meet Trump. They'll have to do it in a soft play centre. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think this is Theresa May's big moment? This could be with her fractured cabinet. You know, she's just barely holding on to power. She's barely got a majority, even then propped up by the <laughs> DUP. This could be her moment to just, in a joint press conference, while he's talking, just interrupt him and go, oh, fucking shut <laughs> up. <laughs> <laughs> Just... She would be PM for life. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, Theresa May can convince him to get involved in the great British sport of resigning. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's got a fantastic. He arrives on Stansted. Yeah. On Thursday night. Yeah. Unlucky. Is that and then... he flies into Essex so we can be with other orange people? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he flies there, then he goes across he goes straight across the Blenheim Palace. Yep. He fly he doesn't say there, he flies down to the US Ambassador's residence, which is in Regent's Park, yep. which is the worst thought out part of the whole trip. Because the ambassador's residence, he won't like it, next door to the mosque. Giant mosque. <laughs> <laughs> Giant <laughs> London mosque. <laughs> mosque. I open the curtains. <laughs> 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 How else would Trump be greeted in London? The blimp. The blimp. Oh. Did you see Farage getting involved? He's like, oh no, no president has ever been showed such disrespect. I was like, four have been shot, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, he can't retaliate because he can't do a Sadiq Khan balloon in America because they won't know who that is, and he can't do a Theresa May one because they'll think America is now haunted. <laughs> <laughs> In other news, <laughs> yeah. what has the Devon Primary School banned this week? Inbreeding. <laughs> <laughs> they've banned a dance, haven't they? They've banned the a dance. dance. Flossing, they've banned, yes. No, Which is from dance. Fortnite, isn't it? It's not from Fortnite. No, I don't know anything about it. I got very angry about that, didn't I? I really got angry. It's <laughs> not from Fortnite, right? Yeah, Grandad, get with the program. <laughs> it's just a dance I that just the we kids do. Dara, right? can you floss? I can floss, but I'm not going to do the flossing. Of course you are. Do oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> You can do that as long as you want. <laughs> really, it has have no power over me. I don't, I don't have you're, to you're floss for anyone. This, you're people... approaching this all wrong. The way to do it is very... I know this man, it's simple as this. I don't believe you. <laughs> 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 that's, that's very clever, but now you've told me your method. My arse am I going to floss on national television? Dara, Susie and I will do it with you. Oh. Don't get me involved in this, mate. <laughs> Why did I get past? Okay, right, okay. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. You start, you start going, going that way first, that way first, and then the crossover. We are likely to make this very, very bad. Right, this is what banned in school. If you're watching in Devon, turn it off now. <laughs> so it's grand. I've just won my game of Fortnite, and then... <laughs> no, it's too much space. That's no, too much space. It's, it's, it's Dara, that's that, not it. It's that, <laughs> that, 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 no, that, no. that, that. I feel that is... There we go, I've got it. People I'm, are getting I was listening to it. The actual worst thing about this is that this clip will feature on the internet with It's Coming Home. <laughs> uh, I'm just really... Watching that is the youngest I've ever felt in my life. <laughs> anyone thinks that that had no satirical value, right, on a topical show, let me just say this. What happened there was the will of the people was respected <laughs> no matter how stupid the yeah, idea yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, at the end of that round, I and the will. <laughs> uh...
Now we come to scenes we'd like to see, so if everyone can make their way over to the performance area, I'll read out this week's topics and we'll see what our panellists can come up with. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Unlikely things to write to TV channels. <laughs> Dear Channel 4, do you still work with that woman that inspects poo? If so, please forward this package to her. <laughs> Dear Dave Plus One, would the pair of you like to come to my wedding? <laughs> Dear ITV2, I've just watched an episode of Love Island and now I think my television has chlamydia. <laughs> Dear The News, I don't know how many times I will write this to you, but next time you do the weather, please will you say, spoiler alert. <laughs> Dear the BBC, can you please get some right-wing comedians on Mot the Week? Because currently, they're all in cabinet and they're making a real fucking mess. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Good Morning Britain, just wanted to say what a brilliant job Piers Morgan's doing. <laughs> Dear Alibi TV, Will you please tell the police I was watching you last week? <laughs> Dear ITV3, why don't you just bite the bullet and call yourself ITV Poirot? <laughs> Dear BBC, it's all sex and violence these days, so I've got very little time for watching the television. <laughs> Channel 5, I recently very much enjoyed your programme called My Penis Is So Big It Is Killing Me. Please could you pass on his phone number before I'm too late? <laughs> <laughs> Dear Channel 5, are you still there? <laughs> <laughs> Dear History Channel, well done on constantly showing storage wars. We were all fed up learning about Cleopatra and Hitler. We wanted to watch Bell Ends rifle through a lockup full of secondhand shite. <laughs> <laughs> Dear History Channel, my wife's getting suspicious. How do I delete you? <laughs> Dear BBC, I saw a man flossing on one of your panel shows and now I want to kill myself. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... Unlikely things to hear on a travel documentary. Hello, I'm not Ramesh Ranganathan. <laughs> <laughs> Please stop coming up to me in the street. Thank you. <laughs> Madagascar was wonderful and very surprising. The animals were real and none of them talked. <laughs> It's amazing what you can pick up in this market in Vietnam. For instance, I've got herpes. <laughs> After a long journey, I'm here in Chad. Great to experience an authentic American frat party. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the brand new travel show about younger guys who want to date older women. A place in the sun while banging your mum. <laughs> New York, the Big Apple, the city that never sleeps. How I wish I was there instead of this shithole. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very volatile geezer, so do remember that before you interview Danny Dyer about Brexit. <laughs> it has been a very harrowing two weeks, but finally the Thames link has got me to Gatwick Airport. <laughs> I'm here in India, where we'll be inspecting some of the country's famous curry trees. <laughs> your wife's left, the kids have gone, all your mates have sided with her and she's even taken the dog. Welcome to Lonely Planet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here on safari in Africa, and next to me is a lynx and... <sighs> Yep, smells exactly like a 15-year-old virgin. <laughs> Paris is known as the city of love, and it's easy to see why. 
It is wall to wall Fanny. <laughs> Amazon Basin. Delivered last Friday, already leaking. Two stars. <laughs> this really is a once-in-a-lifetime trip. I'm here at Dignitas. <laughs> <laughs> Siberia, one of the harshest terrains on Earth. And surprisingly easy to get to. Just call Vladimir Putin a tosser. <laughs> And the locals let me swim with dolphins, which I later found out was their way of telling me I'm terminally ill. <laughs> <laughs> the coffee shops of Amsterdam. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> That's the end of the show. This week's winners are Nish Kumar, Susie Ruffin, and Edmund. <laughs> Commiserations to Reese James, Hugh Dennis, and Angela Barnes. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm Dara Breen. Good night. Mock the Week's taking its summer holidays and will be back in September, but no such break for Ramesh Ranganathan. He's talking to comedians in a pie and mash shop for BBC Three Online. And on iPlayer Radio, the infinite monkey cage turns 100 with Brian Cox and Robin Ince, Eric Idle and Katie Brand. Meanwhile, more from Mr Ranganathan. <laughs> <laughs>